So I made a YouTube short recently that went pretty viral about focus stacking, but with all those views came some pretty interesting comments, something that's completely misleading that people think apparently about focus stacking. Now in this video, we're gonna look at two main myths and we are going to crush them. Oh man, before we get started on this, uh, I knew that we had potential for a burner of a sky. The hike up here to this point is gnarly, probably a 45 degree angle. I'm in a spot that I've never shot before, but I've kind of had my eye on in this area. So I'm gonna take these shots here and then we're gonna go over the first big myth that I saw in the comment section of that video. And that is, shoot at f22 i can't believe how many comments i saw like this i am shocked at how many people think that that's a better solution than focus stacking now let's talk about why this is a terrible idea first being this close to a foreground element it is literally impossible to get everything sharp from front to back for the mountain in the background to the very front element literally i mean from a physics standpoint it's impossible. I'll take a shot here at F16 just to show you guys that there is no possible way that F22, I'll be able to get everything sharp. Just physics won't allow it. Now the main strength of a wide angle lens is its perspective distortion. It really starts to stretch out these elements as it gets near the edges of the frame. This to me is its biggest advantage. You know, a lot of people use a wide angle lens to try and fit everything in the frame. That's a huge mistake. You don't want to do that. You really want to use the advantage and the interesting part of this lens to its advantage, and that is the perspective distortion. In order to get this specific effect, you have to be right up close to that foreground element. You can't be far away. It just, it really doesn't have the same look and the same effect. So if I back up and get everything in focus and you lose that wide angle distortion, so what happens is all of those cactus and all of that interesting foreground, it moves to the middle of the frame. And what happens is something called the pin cushion effect. Now this is the biggest weakness of the wide angle lens and it's a result of that perspective distortion as the edges start to get stretched out, the middle of the frame gets further away, it gets smaller and like a pin cushion, right? So that's why it's called the pin cushion effect. Now in order to get that perspective distortion, the best way to do is you wanna get up higher than something like this cactus here and you wanna dutch down to about 45 degrees. Now I want you guys to watch the mountain at the top of the screen when I do this. So as I dutch down and see how that mountain just starts to really stretch. And you do the same thing if you go the other way. So now I want you to watch the foreground and watch that cactus just start to stretch as it gets closer and closer to the edge here. So that's, that's exactly what I'm looking for when it comes to getting that perspective distortion. And I want you to watch this mountain. When it gets closer to the middle of the frame, watch what this mountain does. It shrinks. You see how small it's getting and further and further away from the camera? So the more things get towards the center of the frame, the smaller they get with a wide angle lens. So you don't wanna put anything important in the center of the frame. That's just a big no-no. The next thing about F22 is something called diffraction. And I think anyone who has used a camera for more than five minutes knows why F22 is a bad idea. But since there's so many people saying this, I guess it's not something that a lot of people know about. So when you close down that aperture really small, all of that light has to enter through a tiny hole. Then it gets diffracted onto the sensor. So when this happens, you're gonna start to lose sharpness. This starts to happen around F16, and then by the time it hits to F22, uh, you just get a really bad quality image. So right after recording this, I went back down to where I filmed the original Focus Stack short video. I wanted to, to mimic the same thing, so I shot this shot at F22. But before I show you guys on the computer here, what I want to do is talk about the difference between one common misconception, and that is depth of field versus sharpness. Depth of field and sharpness are two different things. Now, the sharpest a lens is going to be is usually one to two stops above its maximum aperture or its widest aperture. So I'm shooting on an F4 lens. So one stop above would be F5.6 and two stops would be F8. So F5.6 to F8 is where that lens is going to be the sharpest. Now, F8 to F11 is gonna be your longest or your widest depth of field. When you shoot at F22, you're gonna have the widest depth of field. You may get everything in focus, but as you're gonna see here on the computer, that isn't good. You can see F22. 14 millimeters ISO 64 at one quarter of a second. Everything here is what you would consider in focus, but literally nothing is sharp. If you look here, 
even this part here, this is where I focused. I mean, this is the focus point and it is just not sharp at all. It is extremely, extremely fuzzy. As you get closer to the edges, you can see it only gets worse. Now I could probably post this on like Instagram because nobody really cares about quality on social media. So I could probably post this. Also, I wanted to just take my focus stack image that I took during the last video and this new one here. So this one on the left is my focus stacked PSB. So it's not even a, the finished JPEG and then my shot at F22. And I wanna zoom in and I just wanna show you guys the difference. Now, obviously the light is so much different and there's been some post-processing work done on the left side, but you can just see the difference in the amount of detail. I mean, look at the mountain, look at this right here compared to this. And if we go to the top of the mountain, you can see here all the detail in the rock and you just, it's just blurry down here in the bottom corner. It's the same thing, right? The detail in here versus the detail here, it's just, it's not even close. Now, the second myth we're gonna go over is this. Just stand back at the hyperfocal distance. For those of you who have seen my video on how to get sharp photos, you know how I feel about hyperfocal distance. Now, I have an app on my phone, Photo Pills, that gives me all the hyperfocal distances in different scenarios with different lenses and, and different apertures. And I do think it's important to know what hyperfocal distance is, the, the concept that it exists. Nobody walks out with a tape measure and it's gonna measure out hyperfocal distance or stepping out their composition before they set up their shot. Just nobody's gonna do that. I think you need to be aware that it exists, but using it out in the field practically, just most people aren't gonna do that. I've never done that in my entire life. But let's look at this example. Now, if you step back and you shoot at that hyperfocal distance here in this specific situation, you completely lose the look that I was going for with the wide angle lens. Now I could use a longer focal length and zoom in a little bit and fill the frame more with that Choya cactus. But then again, every time you zoom in and use a longer focal length, that hyperfocal distance is gonna change and it's gonna get further and further away. So the hyperfocal distance at F11 at 14 millimeters is gonna be a lot different than at 35 millimeters at f11 right the hyperfocal distance is going to be further away so the more you zoom in the further back you have to get to make that hyperfocal distance now for this high impact perspective distortion wide angle lens photo that i want if it's not your style that's fine fair enough like that completely is an argument that i completely understand there's definitely nothing wrong with that my wife actually just completely flat out refuses to do stuff like this nope <laughs> It's too much faff, you know, she wants to just back up, take a shot, not have to do any kind of exposure blending or focus stacking or any of that stuff. She just has no desire for it. <laughs> kind of like the uh, last video I did with the geared head. She took one look at that geared head and she's just like, mm -mm -mm. there's way too much faff going on. You got three different knobs that go different directions. She's like, I want nothing to do with that. I have no desire and that's fine. Completely different style. So that argument, I completely understand. I wanted to make this video just to clear some of these things up. You know, there's apparently a lot of people who think that that's a good idea. Now, unless you're shooting a large format camera, which you can shoot a F22, F32, but you're not gonna be able to do that with a crop sensor, with a full frame camera, just shooting at those apertures are never a good idea. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people who watched that video and commented, uh, because it's a YouTube short, are probably not gonna see this video, so they're gonna keep on being, uh, ignorant unfortunately but anyway if you guys are interested uh link down below for the second breakfast club that's our first youtube membership it's three dollars a month uh, it helps support the channel you guys get some benefits and perks so check it out if you're interested thank you guys so much for watching as always i really appreciate it and i'll see you in the next one bye